When you were a kid, did you like to finger paint? Or do you remember finger painting? Well, I'm Barb Owen of Barb Owen Designs. And in this class, I'm going to show you the grown-up version of finger painting. It's much more sophisticated. And it's really a lot more fun. But it kind of is reminiscent of taking you back to those good old days when you remember just getting messy and just having fun. Today's class, in this class, we're going to learn about creating paste paper. Now you might ask what is paste paper, so let me show you an example. A few examples actually. This is paste paper. So I'm going to show you some, several of the designs I have here and then we'll talk more about it. Different colors, different designs. I mean, that is some serious lusciousness right there. Take a look at that one. Look at those colors. And that one, this one you can see several different layers, different layers in the, and different colors showing through the various layers. And you'll probably hear me say about a million times as we go through today's class, this is one of my favorites. <laughs> because you know what? They're my favorites. All right, that is paste paper. Now paste paper is the process of taking some kind of paste or starch and adding acrylic paint to it and mixing it up, painting it on something, and then texturizing it somehow with different kinds of tools. That's the premise behind paste paper. So I've sort of put my own twist on the concept of paste paper and I've added ink to the equation. So we're going to play with that. So first of all, we need to go through the supplies. One of the first thing you're going to need, and look at this mess. I have this big mess on my, on my table today. <laughs> and I do mean big mess. The first thing you're going to need is some sort of paste or starch. So this is art paste, Elmer's art paste. This is the one I'm going to be working with today. This is usually available in, well, you can usually find it in craft stores. It comes in a little bag like this, inside a box. That's the whole thing. This usually runs around $5 for this amount. Um, but you can usually find this now in a craft store. If you can't find it in the craft store, you will maybe need to order it. If you can't, if you don't have access to the art paste, then you might be able to find Stay Flow liquid starch. That'll work too. If you don't have that or don't want to buy something and you happen to have this on hand, this is wallpaper paste. And it doesn't have to be this brand. It doesn't have to be the borders over wallpaper. It can just be plain old wallpaper paste that's pre-mixed in a container. Now, the difference between these two things, because these are both pastes, is this one has to be liquefied. So I take a gallon jug of distilled water. Now you want to use distilled water because distilled water is what I like to call dead water and it doesn't grow anything. All the stuff has been taken out of it that might mold or, you know, any of that. So I dump out just a little bit of the distilled water from the jug and then empty the whole contents, the entire contents of this little bag into the jug and stir it with a stick, uh, let it sit for a little bit, stir it again. And then I dated this just so I knew when I mixed it up. This was mixed up in November of 09 and there has never been any problem with it whatsoever because it is in fact, oops, Sorry, gave you <laughs> gave me an interesting shot there for a second, didn't I? Um, the reason that it it has not that it's saved, you know, stayed fine and without any mold problems is because it was distilled water. And then I just took the little box and folded it up, 
and uh, taped it in here and that's just so I know that in fact there is art paste in this it's not just distilled water so that's what we're going to be working with today and so we'll set that over there and just to let you know that this works just fine all these work fine because I worked with all of them in preparing for this class the thing you need to know about wallpaper paste is that some of them or quite a few of them do have some chemicals added to them so you want to be a little bit careful about working with them just I've never had a problem but just so you know okay so that's the paste that's the basis for the paste then you need to have acrylic paints and it's any kind of acrylic paints will work for this um, these the ones that I've selected are an assortment of different brands of craft acrylic paints and you want to have some that are metallic it doesn't really matter which brand of metallic it doesn't matter which brand of craft paint but you want to have an assortment and I choose the brighter colors I like the effect that they have on this process so I like the brighter colors better I tried doing some things with black eh, one my favorite but you know you can do whatever you want uh, let's see what else to mix up the paints and the paste to make what I call paste paint I recommend using these little disposable cups so that when you're finished with it throw them out and if you have some gra craft sticks or plastic spoons something like that to mix up your combine your paste and your paint together that's just perfect you need to have some kind of brushes and I use most of the time I use foam brushes like you know just the plain old foam brushes but if you have the chip brushes like this these will work too either one but you need to have one brush per color of paint that you're using so we have brushes you're going to need um, newsprint or plastic of some kind to protect your surface so what I have on my surface that I'm going to be working on is this great big giant pad of newsprint I mean this thing must be it's probably about 24 inches by about 18 something like that but it's a nice big pad of newsprint now the good part about that is that you get the bonus you get bonus papers when you're working on the newsprint all of this the um, stuff that it catches then can become additional papers to use in your artwork so that is great if you don't have access to newsprint and it's not expensive stuff but if you don't have access to newsprint any kind of paper will do or you can put a sheet of plastic on your table to protect your surface you're also going to need plastic or a sheet an old sheet or something to put some place where you're going to dry your papers because you'll you will accumulate lots of papers as you're doing this process and you need to just have a place to lay them out uh, where they're going to be in single sheet and not stacked up you're going to need something to texturize your papers with and so I have an assortment of texturing texturizing tools here and so I'm going to show you this assortment of things to texturize your papers with one thing you might use is called a paint eraser and that is this this guy here and it has a chisel point you can see a chisel point or a real tight point I tend to use this one more I get more texture out of it and that is what this is all about is texture this paint eraser is meant to clean up lines when you're you're um, painting it just is a way to kind of clean things up and true things up rather than using a brush to do it the other thing this can be used for is on clay so plastic clay tools will work for this as well uh, my very favorite thing to use actually is old credit cards and or room keys old room keys so there's an assortment here and this one actually this particular one right here that has the notches around, around the side comes from a paint store and this is a depth gauge for painting purposes I have no idea how you use that and I don't care to know because I'm going to use it to texture paint with it's a very cool tool to do that with but if you don't have access to one of these I want to show you how to make it so first of all you're going to need a fake 
either not a fake credit card, a real credit card. The fake ones are like this. They're made out of cardboard and they come in the mail. And these are good too, but they don't last nearly as long as the plastic ones do. And then I use the heavy duty hole punches. And these are by the company We Are Memory Keepers. This one is a quarter inch hole punch. And this one with the blue handle is a 16th of an inch hole punch. So I'm going to show you how to use both of them. And there is a little um, hole or a little gate up here. There's a little gate on the top of the tool that says open and you can just literally open it up and there's a release to open the tool. So the little gate up here, this little cover allows you to see the hole right in there. So you can actually see that hole right in there. I think you can see, yeah, that light spot, that's the hole. So you can look right inside there to see what you're going to punch. So what I've done is I've taken my card and I've used a Sharpie marker so it will stay on the plastic and I've marked where I want to punch the holes just like that across there and this could be an evenly spaced pattern or it could be a pattern that had some variation in it then you're just going to look through the tool into the hole so I'm looking right through that little hole and seeing the mark and when I punch the hole I'm not punching a complete hole I'm only punching about half of the circumference of that hole because what I'm really after here is not the hole as much as it is the space between the holes that's the space that's going to actually create the pattern in the paint so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to take my punch and I'm going to look through that little window. And because this hole is so tiny, it's just a sixteenth of an inch, you just have to look through it. So you're spotting through the hole in, in the tool and just keep punching punching the design until you have your design all the way across that's with the teeny tiny hole punch okay to use the bigger one to get a night a deeper because i will tell you these little holes do fill up with paint so you have to be kind of aware of that but to make a bigger pattern like this one again i've marked across the uh, the card <clears throat> and I'm going to do the same thing. I open the little gate. So there's a little gate um, window. I don't know what the technical term is. Open the thing up so you can see. And then do the same thing. Just put your tool in there. So that you can see the, the mark. So you can see the mark in there and it's about halfway. It's only about halfway up that I'm punching those holes. And the closer the holes are to each other, the less space you're going to have in between the holes. The further apart they are, the more space you're going to have. So it just truly depends on when you start experimenting it just truly depends on the design you want as to how close together you do those holes so on this card i punched one side pretty evenly spaced all the way across on the end i punched it so that there is you know more space between the holes on this side i punched a really irregular pattern and then i've got one more side over here i can do something different so this is a way, by using that hole punch, 
it's a way that you can replicate this tool if you can't get one. If you can get one of these, just use it. If you only have the fake credit cards, these cardboard kinds of things where they're trying to get you to apply for the card or what have you, you can just use scissors and you can cut, it, cut up into the card. Again, sort of evenly space your notches or whatever design you want, how, whatever kind of spacing you want. Cut up into that and then bend them back and then cut off the little tabs so that you create this kind of toothed um, tool. Now on this side, I've created like a zigzag tool, but these are tiny little points and they may or may not be what you want. You just truly have to experiment with them. I like, I tend to like the ones that have a little bit more space between, uh, between, how do I say this so it makes sense? I prefer to have a little bit more space in here like this so that when I draw this through the paint, it actually creates a line. And so you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But I like the variety of having choices between the finer lines and the thicker lines. So you'll see that. This is another tool that you might use. This was is actually a grill tool. And it's kind of grew, um, smoothed down or angled down on one side and it's, and it's very blunt on the other side. And this is, this is a tool that you find with a lot of the, I think it's a, actually a George Foreman grill cleaner, cleaning tool, you know, to go down the, the grill, uh, the grill, they're not really grates, but the sections in the grill to clean them off. And it works great for this process, but it, it does create some pretty big fat lines. But that's, you know, that's okay. You might find things like this if you have these from a blast from the past these can also work. Sometimes you find texture tools like this that are available in paint departments and faux finish departments. Again, just get, just try things. Just see what, you know, just try it. See what you like. That's the fun part about this. You just try it and see what you like. All right. What else do we need? Uh, paper towels, of course. You always have to have paper towels. You need to have some ink. Now, this is ink. <clears throat> These, the inks that we're gonna use are the Delusions by Ranger Industries. These are Delusions by Diane Reevely by Ranger Industries to be exact. These are ink sprays. And these are very potent. And these are water-based and they will reactivate when they're hit with water. That's part of what we're doing with this. It's just, it's fun to see what they do. They're highly pigmented. They will stain your skin, and so you wanna make sure that you wear some kind of plastic gloves when you use them. So what I do is I take, they come with um, these little plastic caps, which I recommend definitely that you store these with the caps on. You do not want to make the mistake of having little children come around and go, oh, what's this? It's really bad. So. But when I'm going to use them, I just take all the caps off and drop them in there. And this is a disposable container that I bought in the grocery store. I just keep the gloves here. And then when I go do the ink process, it's all ready to go. And I'm going to tell you more about that in just a moment. Now, there's other things that you need to for the printing surface, like the papers. What kind of papers are you going to use? The one that I like really well and that you're going to see me use the most is just plain old cardstock. And that's what this is. It's just plain cardstock. This is 65 pound cardstock. It really doesn't matter what the weight is. It doesn't really matter what the color is, but mostly I like white. Um, I'm not very fond of black. I did do some experimentation with black. I keep trying to like black cardstock. And you know, it's just not my favorite. So what can I say? When it's not your favorite, it's not your favorite. I keep trying, but I prefer white or other light colors actually for this process. So white cardstock or light colors. You're gonna need some newspaper when you go outside to do your ink process. 
Some other papers that you can use to do this, you can use book text. So this is old text paper from old kids encyclopedias. And so these have, these are all treated with the paste paper and we'll play with those a little bit tonight. <laughs> tonight. Can you tell I'm filming at night? Today. We'll use them today. This is another thing you can use. These are This is old paper that came out of a scrapbook from someplace. And so I use that. This is old, old, and I do mean sincerely old. I don't even know what the date is on it, but it's really old, newspaper. And by using the paste paper on it, it no longer will crumble and carry on. I don't know how archival it is, and I don't really care, but you know, it's something to try and play with. So all these are old newspaper pieces. And some of them are really pretty and some of them are really ugly and need more work, but that's the nature of playing with this process. You can also use scrapbook papers. This is a less than pretty scrapbook paper. Um, but you know, it's it, with some work, it's totally usable in my artwork. So uh, this came off. This came out of a pad of paper that was a very inexpensive pad of paper, and is just not particularly my favorite. And so I'm going to alter it and see what I can do with it. And one last surface that you might play with, and this is a whole process of playing, is deli wrap or deli paper. And I have a couple of different kinds here. One is a striped deli paper. It's the kind of thing that they'll, you know, in the grocery stores, they'll, if you go to the counter and you, in the bakery and you buy a cookie or a donut or something like that, they'll reach in with the deli paper and pick it up so that they don't touch it with their hands. That's what the deli wrap is. Or they'll find, sometimes they'll wrap sandwiches in this and hand you the sandwich. It's kind of slick on one side, a little more matte on the other. But this one already has a texture look about it in the striped look, which I think is really nice because you gives you a head start. You can also find deli wrap sometimes where it's just a smooth, it's, it's still slick or waxy on one side and more matte on the other, but it's a smooth look. There's no striping to it. So that works too and gives you a completely different kind of texture. And let's see, oh, foam stamps. These are some of the things that you can use to create texture with, in addition to the scraping tools. Foam stamps, these big old foam stamps like this. They're usually inexpensive. They're usually not more than a dollar or two dollars for these big foam stamps. But the bigger, bolder stamps work better. Um, the um, alphabet foam stamps work well too. Bubble wrap, these are three different sizes of bubble wrap that I have here. The small, the one that has the most paint on it, this is the small bubble wrap. This is the next size, kind of a medium, and this is the big Mamba Jamba bubble wrap. And I've even, I even have another piece that's even bigger bubbles than that, and it makes a really nice textural element. And then you need to have some stencils, and that is what these are. And there's a variety of stencils here. And some of them come from the kids' department, the kids' craft department. Some of them come from the art department. Some of them are from the scrapbook department. And some of them from the needlework department in a craft store. These come from the kids' department. Just little strip stencils. They work very well. This is plastic canvas. And I have three pieces of it here. And it comes in, some of it comes shaped. Some of it comes in the round, which is what this one was. It was round, and I cut out the middle of it so I had a circle and a ring. So you can do, you can actually alter the the uh, plastic canvas. This is, it also comes in rectangular or square shapes, and then I cut out the um, heart shape. So I not only get the texture from the grid, the canvas, but also from it, it works as a stencil. These are stencils that came from the scrapbooking or art store. And so here's one. This is 
known, this is called a mask. It's different than a stencil. The stencil, you're spraying, you're spraying through, <clears throat> through and leaving the design from the design that's, that's cut out of the stencil, such as this. These are both stencils. And this one is also a stencil. And so is this. I need a drink. Excuse me one moment. My apologies. I've had a bit of a, um, a little cold and so I'm having to kind of keep my throat wet. How about that? <laughs> Here's another stencil. So all of those are stencils. So you're spraying through the design that's cut out. This acts as a stencil. This is actually a found object. This belongs to part of it's been cut off. This is actually a paper plate holder. So you know those paper plates that you take to a picnic that, you know, kind of are flimsy and stuff. And so somebody came out with holders. Some of them are basket shaped, you know, woven holders. And this one was plastic and it had a lip on it, which I cut off, but it makes a great stencil. Now, this is a mask and so is this. So when you put these down on the paper or you put this down on the paper, you're going to actually have a completely different effect than you're going to get with the stencil. So one is the positive and one is the negative. So that's the difference between a stencil and a mask. Here's a stencil and here's another one. So these are some of my favorite stencils and um, stamps that I'm going to be using for this technique also. And I think that covers all of our supplies that we're going to be using in this process. So let's just get after it, shall we? All right, step number one. The first part of this process, I'm going to walk you through it because the first part of it involves going outside and spraying with the ink, and I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to show you how. I'm going to just tell you how. I'm not, the reason I'm not going to do it is because I'm inside and I don't want to get this mess all over every place in here. So you can see, look how, how beautiful this is getting. Mm -mm -mm. Take this outside and your stencils and your inks and your gloves and a stack of cardstock. So you're going to just take a whole piece, a whole bunch of cardstock. If you want to spray inks on scrapbook paper to alter them immediately, you can do that as well. But just take a big old stack of stuff out with you. It could be white cardstock, can be other colors. Take it all outside, put your gloves on, and then use your stencils. That's the first step. So you can do things like just lay, and I, when I do this, I do, I do not think about it. I don't plan it. I just simply kind of go into the zone and just kind of play. And that is the whole process of making paste paper is just the process of playing. So if you're not good at playing, this is a really good time for you to see an experiment with doing exactly that. Put your stencil down. I just reach in, I get uh, one of the spray inks and I go ch -ch -ch, put it back, grab another one ch -ch, and that's probably it. And then I take it off and it's going to look like See if I can find one here that's done with that stencil. Of course, I pulled the one stencil out that I didn't use here. Well, we'll pretend with this one. This is a piece of pink cardstock. I don't think I have any other ones here. Let me look, just a second. No, okay. So here's my pink stencil, I mean my pink cardstock, and instead of that stencil I used 
the diamond stencil, this one, and I laid it down on, I laid it on here just about like that, and I sprayed it with pink, and then I took it and turned it over and pressed whatever ink was on the stencil, pressed it on, <clears throat> press it right on the surface also. So that's how I got it. These other bits, this is the bottom, that paper plate holder thing. That came from spraying something else and then just smashing it on here just to get the ink that was left on it. So that's what you do. You just, you know, take two or three stencils or one or, you know, some of the plastic canvas and you just simply spray give no really don't give any thought to planning it just go for it those are those strip stencils from the kids department <clears throat> that one has a little more ink on it than i do on a lot of them but you know it was um i was in the mood to do that that's that stencil that has wings on it that came from the home deck more of the the wall stencil department and that one has quite a bit of ink so i did all of those with the stencils and do not clean your stencils off for this process other than to possibly turn them upside down and print them on the next sheet of paper. <clears throat> you can do the same thing with your scrapbook papers and I don't know that I have any that I haven't already painted. I don't. But you can do the very same thing with the scrapbook paper. You just take it, lay it down on your surface, put the stencil over it, and spray it with some ink. Now the dark ones like this, I didn't didn't put ink on. I, I just went straight to the the um, paint dissolved, mixed into the paint. Okay, so I and I did not bother drying these with a heat gun or anything. I just as I'd spray one, I'd set it off to the side, go to the next one, set it on top, go to the next one, and I just kept going. And because the, the um, ink penetrates the paper pretty quickly, and the next thing you know, you've got a big stack of cardstock, paper, whatever you're using that has ink on it, and you're ready to come back in your house, and you fold up your newspaper and save it till the next time. So we're all done with that. You can take your gloves off. Hopefully you've protected your hands so you don't have a bunch of ink on your hands. And now you're all done with the spray ink so they can go away. <clears throat> okay, the next thing you're gonna do is prepare your paints. So in this little box here, I have my paints. <clears throat> So I've taken my little series of cups, these are disposable cups as I said, and in this, in each cup I've put about a quarter of an inch of my solution of art paste dissolved in water or the wallpaper paste or the stay flow starch, it doesn't matter which one you're using. Whichever one you're using, put about a quarter of an inch of that in your little cup. And these are small cups. These are not big at all. I'd, I'd say it might be three ounces or so. And put that in your little cup. So let's do that in this one. Just so you can see exactly how to do it. And I'm just going to put just a tiny bit. So, I mean, it really is a small amount. So about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And then pick the color of paint that you're gonna put in there. And let's see, let me pick a color that I don't have. How about purple? <clears throat> so this happens to be purple, uh, Craft Smart Purple. So shake your paint up. And you squirt quite a bit in. It's a big glob. 
it's a big glob of paint. Uh, I don't know how to tell you how much paint it is because you just kind of go by the consistency of the paint. Mix it up really well. If it's not dark enough when you put it on the paper, you might want to add some more paint. If it is too dark and you're obscuring too much of the paper, then you want to put a little more art paste in with it. But it ends up to be about half paint and and half art paste or starch or whatever you're using. And what this stuff does is it allows the paint, it thin, it, it's kind of a funny process because it kind of thins the paint, yet it also keeps it from slumping back together when you create the design in it. And so I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. So it's nice if you just put these inside this little container like this. That way they don't um, get too far away from you when you're using them as in spilling. And then if you have some left over like I did here, they'll keep for a day or so if you just put a nice tight lid on it. You can even put them in the refrigerator. They'll last even longer if they're in the refrigerator. But they last, you know, They'll last a little bit. They won't last forever by any means, but they'll last for a little while. And you want to have a brush for each color. And I usually just stick the brushes in the containers as I'm getting ready. That way I've got them all ready to go. So, you have any questions? <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Now's a good time to ask. I know, I know, I'm teasing you. If you need to contact me about questions, of course, you can always email me if you have questions about the process. We are going to get ready to make some paste paper. Finally, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so there's my little box of goodness. I do have a paper towel on the bottom of it because as you can see, I've already slopped it in there and that helps to just catch the drips and absorb it a little bit. I have my texture tools ready and I have my stamps over here. I have my bubble wrap and what have you ready and then we just start playing. Ready, set, let's go. Okay, so I'm going to take one of my papers which has the um, texture or the ink sprayed on it. Move these out of the way a little bit. So there is my ink sprayed through the stencil. And I just pick a color. I don't spend any time thinking about it. I don't spend any time worrying about it. I'll just pick one. So I'm going to use this bright orange. And the brighter the color, the better I like it doing this process. I do have to force myself for variety to do some that aren't super bright. Um, but bright is always where I go for some reason. So just paint an even coat. Now you can't dilly dally around about this. You got to get it on there because this has a limited amount of time before it starts drying. It does dry fairly quickly. If you want to add another color, just go right, uh, fill in with the other colors. This one happens to be a red metallic. <clears throat> Fill it in. And then I just kind of dance between the colors with my brush just to kind of blend them slightly. You don't need to blend them very much. And then grab your texture tool, whatever tool you're going to use, let's use this one, and texture the paint. And usually I go one direction and then I'll just let it sit and then I will come back and add, if I want to add more colors to it, I'll come back and add that and draw a different pattern next time. So you can already see that this is pushing the first layer, that layer of ink, which is water soluble, but you can see that it has not completely dissolved. It's softened a little bit in some places. And sometimes it might drag some of it out like it did up here. It's no big deal. 
you know it just but it's it's softening and beginning to push that first layer of ink that design with the clocks kind of backward into the design so now you take this piece and set it aside to dry <clears throat> so let's go to the next one same thing <clears throat> Just simply grab a color. Don't pay any attention to thinking about it. Grab a color. Stir it up with your brush. This is lime green. Paint it on right over the ink. You want to paint it off the paper so that you get clear to the edges. <clears throat> As I said, don't dilly-dally around. You want to get the paint on there because it immediately starts drying. Okay, so put it on and then figure out what you want to do to texture it. So let's see whether a stamp will work. Sometimes the stamps work great, sometimes they don't. And yeah, that's not going to work so well. So in that case, if it doesn't leave me enough of an impression, then I just stamp it off on my uh, catch paper underneath. So I'm already beginning to get designs on that. And then you can just take your um, whatever texture tool you want to use and do your texturing. And you don't have to do the same shape all the way across. Like just because I started with um, the uh, zigzag doesn't mean I have to leave that. And if I don't like it, which in this case I didn't, I can just come right back over it with another coat of the paint, as long as I do it before it dries and then go to another tool and see if you like that design and can you see it and yes I can so that one that one I like <clears throat> so there is that one so again you can see the roses beginning to push back in the paper all right, we'll do a couple more. <clears throat> you can also combine colors. You don't have to use just one color on the sheet as I showed you on the first one. So we're gonna put that color there and then I'm gonna go to this metallic. This is a metallic blue, I believe. So we're going to add some of that. Again, I kind of dance between the colors. And I literally mean I'm just dancing between the colors just to blend it a little bit. And then I'm going to take my, um, let's see, let's do this. This is using that uh, grill scraper tool. And you're much better off when you do this if you just simply go for it and don't worry about what it's going to look like. And then let's do this one. So I went, used two different tools and did a couple of different patterns. So there's that one. I like that one a lot. Actually, I like them all. Okay, let's do this one. This is on pink cardstock. So let's do, what I wanna do is show you that it doesn't really matter a whole lot with the color of the cardstock is. Now, as you do this, 
when you're working on top of this newsprint, you may pick up some of the wet paint from around the edges, and I absolutely don't worry about that because I like I like the serendipitous quality of just seeing what happens. So I'm going to pick up some orange. Orange. And put the orange in the places that I didn't put yellow. And then you can use your stencils. Let's use a different stencil here. We're going to use the circle one if I can get a hold of it here. Here it is. <clears throat> and while the paint is wet, just put the stencil down face down. If you can figure out which side had the most ink on it, put it down in the wet paint. And then I just kind of press it in the places, you know, where I can touch it with my finger without sticking it in the paint and then peel it off. And what you get is the stencil. You can see the, the dots from the stencil that's pulled the ink off of that. Now there is ink on, or there's paint now on my stencil. So I can take another one of the papers and before it dries, I can stick it down on that and just print it off, print off the paint that stuck to the stencil. And that's another way to do it too. So that was the pink paper, but you can see there really isn't much trace of the pink paper left. There's a little bit, but not much. <clears throat> okay, now that you just keep going that way. So you work in a process of printing, you work in the process of, of stamping, texturing, using the bubble wrap. You can do all kinds of things. You just work in that process until you have the, a layer on each one of your papers. Then you can dry the papers and look at them and see if you like how they look. Now here's one I did a little while ago and it's really a little bit on the boring side. It's, it's okay, but it's a little boring. So then you can go over them with another, a second coat of color. So let's do that. So now let's go on top of it with this beautiful aqua color. I think this is Bahama blue. Again, this was on white cardstock. So there is my color. Let's try the stamp on this one and see what it does. See if it'll work this time. Sometimes they work really well and sometimes they don't. There we go. So you can see how the stamp now pulled. What it's doing is it's pulling paint off with the stamp is what it's doing. And if you had another um, piece, another one of your papers handy, you would just transfer that paint right on over to another one of your papers. Okay, let's say that that's good enough for that. Then if you want to add some additional texture in here, you can get one of your texture tools. Let's say this one because it's little. And I can add texture in here. So I'm avoiding where my flowers are. And you can do this until the paint starts to dry. Once the paint starts to dry, you're done. You have to stop and wait until it's completely dry. And then you can go for the next layer. And you ask how many times, how many layers of paint do you do? It's like you do as many as you want. 
until it feels done. So there's another one. So that was another layer of paint put over something that I wasn't crazy about. And often when I don't like something, the next layer provides the magic. And that next layer is often, often makes it something that I just fall in love with because it's like just amazing how it affects the various colors and layers of uh, a pattern, how it pushes the patterns back. I'm just looking for another, oh here, let's do this one. Let's see, we want to do that one. Let's do this one because it's really quite bland. Okay, there is that one. All right, let's go over the top of this with, don't think about it, just get it. This is a metallic bronze color. Now, after you get that first initial coat of paint on, the ink is sealed in there, and so it's not going to reactivate anymore, which is pretty neat. All right, so we've got that coat on there. So that's a coat of bronze. So let's go this time. Let's go with a design and let's go catty corner. So from corner to corner. And then you can always come back with something that's smaller if you want to. So, and so when that dries, I know that has a lot of shine on it. When that dries, you're going to see the metallic and you're going to see all the layers underneath. You'll see there's dots that are way down there. There's some stencil that's way down there. There's some texture from the layer below. Um, completely changes what that original piece looks like by adding those extra layers. Okay, let's do one more. And then I'll show you some ways to use the paste papers. Okay, one more. So this is what it looks like before. And let's go over it with some purple. Now you don't have to go over the entire sheet if you don't want to, but I find that I kind of like going over the whole sheet most of the time. And as I showed you a couple times, you can combine colors of paint right on the same sheet. Okay, and before this dries on me, Let's say we want to use this tool and just see what happens. And 
if you like finger painting, you can always use your finger and go in here and do some finger painting as well. Whether it's dots or pulls or texture or whatever you want. So there is that one. Now that could be a pretty cool book cover, which they do a lot with um, the paste papers. Okay, so we'll put this one aside to dry. Now, after all of your papers are dry, after they're all dry and you've played with them and added as many layers as you want to them, then if they, if they have dried and they're curly, you know, like they're curled up, which they tend to do that where they curl around the edges, then you, what I did to flatten them out or get them pretty flat is I took them to my ironing board. I put parchment paper on the ironing surface. I misted very lightly, misted the back of the paper or the cardstock, the back side only, mist it with water and use, a, use an iron that's dedicated to fiber or paper arts and no steam and iron the back of it. And it's amazing how well that will iron them down for you, which is pretty, pretty cool. All right, let me clean up my surface here just a little bit. So I can show you some of the cool things that you can do with these papers. So I'm just covering up the wet, just bending sheet, the sheet back so it will cover up a little bit. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at some of the things you can do to get creative. I've got uh, lots of paint on my hands, but I think it's dry. So <laughs> we'll hope it's dry. So here are some of the things you can do. There are people who are very, that paste paper is their art. That is their art form. And so let me get me out of the picture so you can really see this. So this is, I forgot, this is a better shot here. You can see it better. Let me get all this stuff out of the way. All this goodness needs to get away so you can see what I'm talking about. We'll move it. Excuse my arm and my reach and all that stuff just to get it kind of out of the way. Okay. So that, as I started to say, there are artists that their specialty, their art form is the paste paper. And, and they'll do these beautiful paste papers and then frame them and they're works of art and they're sold that way. I didn't want to do that, but I did decide that I wanted to make a book out of it. So here is my book. So this is the paste paper. And so here is my book. So these are all different pieces of the paste paper. I just took the pieces, the sections that I liked the most, cut them. I put a little ink around the edge and the background is watercolor paper that I printed on my jelly plate. And there's uh, going to be a class. By the time you see this, there will probably be a class recorded on the jelly plate. There's more. And there's that one. And there's that one. Then you can keep going and you can look this way. And so there are additional pieces of paste paper on the other side. And then we're back at the beginning. Now this is called an accordion style book. And so not only can you look at it that way, you can also look at it this way. So it becomes something you can set on your mantle that way. So you can see the whole book. So you can set it on the mantle or a table, or you can turn it around and you get a completely different set of paste papers that you can look at like so, like that. And it will stand up because it is done with watercolor paper. So it's substantial enough that it will stand up or you can just use it as a book and lay it, you know, on your, 
I don't know. I don't have to put it any place. I can just have it and look at it because I love it. <laughs> yes, I do. I love my own stuff. Okay, these are note cards. And these are note cards that I purchased that were white or ivory or craft colored. I got them at the card at the um, craft store. And let's see if maybe, no, yeah, that's a better shot. Just the way I was showing it to you. We'll do it this way. How about that? And they were just plain white, as I said, or ivory or craft colored note cards. And then I printed them. I printed the backgrounds and let me show you what I printed them with. Again, remember I told you never pass up the kids craft section. These are from the kids craft section. These are textured fun foam pieces. They're meant to do craft projects for kids, but they're textured. There's zigzag and there's dots and there's um, lines. There's all kinds of things. So you can just roll ink or paint on them, which I used acrylic paint uh, on the plate. I called that a print plate. Put it on there. Put this down on top of it like... So this was... I rolled on with a roller, uh, with a brayer. I brayered on paint and I put this on top of it. Used a clean brayer and brayered over the top of it to transfer the paint from this onto this. So that's how I got the background, okay? Just like that. Then I decided which pieces of the art paste paper I liked, cut them out, inked around the edge just a little bit, put some ink around the edges of the card, and I have some interesting note cards. So there's that one. These are all done the same way. They're all inked with fun foam printing plates. There's another one. This is the on the craft card stock um, note cards. There's another one. That's on white. There's another one. This one will make your eyes go crazy because of the, the lines. And there's another one. And another one. So that's something else you can do with it. You can also take the pieces of, of completed art paste paper and you can make book covers out of them. Uh, lots of people do that. They make, you know, just make a book and make a hardback book and then cover the outside. Because it is acrylic paint, it um, is permanent. And uh, let's see what else. You can always, if you have a die cutting machine, I'll show you some of these little sweet things. I think they're sweet. I just got entirely too much stuff here in the way. Let me just move it all off. Sorry about the blurridge there. Okay. Now we can see it. So in here I have all kinds of little bits and pieces of my paste papers that I've die cut using a die cutting machine and various dies. So this is one. These could be easily used on a card. So you could take a card and you could put this on the surface of your card like so. You could put a sentiment on here, a greeting of some kind. So you can see the different ones, different shapes. Uh, and then I've die cut some of them into actual shapes, you know, recognizable shapes. There's stars. This is the scrapbook paper that has the art paste on it. scrapbook papers. I have some little butterfly shapes, so I die cut those. Some of those are scrapbooks. The scrapbook paper that's been altered, some of them are also just the cardstock that I started with the inked. Like that one started with the ink. There's another one. So there's ticket shapes, 
I mean, the sky is the limit. It just depends on what what kind of machine you have and what shapes shapes options you have and so forth and so on. And you just make yourself a whole bunch of these little shapes and then you can just decorate cards, you can decorate journal pages, you could decorate scrapbook pages. You can but by having things, you know, in an assortment, then you have choices. Which is as I've said a bunch of times, I'm all about having choices. Then you can do the there are some of those dies that you that you have that are little tiny pieces. So there's keyholes and rectangles and little tiny squares and little um, circular kind of, you know, part of a circle shape. But you can do those, do all kinds of things with those too, you know? Too much fun. You could also make bookmarks out of these. Um, gosh, this it's like whatever you can think of to do with paper. You can do um, scrapbook pages. You can, I mean, you could weave, you could take strips of it and weave it together and create a whole new paper. I mean, it just really is one of those things that just goes on and on and on. You can do the newspaper as I showed you or talked to you about earlier, showed you some examples. You can take old newspaper, you can do the paste paper process on top of that. And then you can use that, tear it in strips, use that in your art journal pages. I mean, seriously, you can do a lot of stuff. This is another thing you can do with it when you're, it's so hard to use up all your paint. You end up with paints left, left over, no matter how hard you try, you'll end up with paints left over. And so one of the things you can do is have an altered book like this. This is a book I'm altering. And I just, the paints, when I have the, the paste paints left, then I just paint them in the page and then before it, I let it dry just a little bit and before it's completely dry, I put a piece of parchment paper in here between the pages and the paint will pick up some of the texture. See if I can find one here that's a really good example. It will pick up some of the texture, see this, from the parchment paper. So you instantly have some background already in your already in your altered book. And then you can, as you continue altering the book, you have a background to begin with. See? Very cool. Very cool. So that should hope pique your interest in working with paste papers and which is like the uh, elevated version of finger painting and I hope that you'll try it because it really is fun and I hope it answers some questions that maybe you've had if you've ever heard of art paste or paste papers maybe it'll give you a um, heads up on how to get started and play around with it if you have any questions email me don't forget about the class notes. You'll find those located beside the video. And until next class, if you've enjoyed this one, I hope you'll tell your friends. And I will see you again soon. I hope you have a wonderfully creative day. And I will see you soon. Thanks for joining me. And I'm Barb Owen of Barb Owen Designs. And I'll see you next time in the next class. Bye for now.